So Starbun are always pushing the research and development into ISAPs, whether it's to do with packaging their SUPs, as you may have seen with their first little video, or to actually producing a better board to paddle on the water. This video, we're gonna concentrate on looking at four things. We're gonna concentrate on looking at the new changes for the Starboard Airline board. We're gonna look at the new shape of the touring board and the iGo in the new construction, and also be looking at the Starboard Lima for 2019. All these changes Starboard have put into 19 to either make you paddle faster, have a better paddling experience, or just get you on the water for less money. So there's some great features we're gonna talk about in this video. So let's start off with the Starboard Airline. This is the 14 by 28 all-star downwind board from Starboard. So this has got a little bit more nose rocker than the other boards. If you are after a flat water speed race board, you're gonna be looking at the 14 by 28 in the flat water, the non-downwind version, or you could be going down to the narrower base boards. They also make a 14 by 26, a 14 by 24, and a 12 six by 27. So before we talk about the new features on this board, it's still got the same high tension armored cable going underneath. It's still got the nose cone around the front of the board and you still have the same way to tension the actual board. It's really interesting and it's good fun actually trying out the tension of these boards. I'll just go straight into the deflection test, which is where we put the board on a gap of 1.5 meters apart and we put 75 kilograms of weight on the center. So this is pumped up to 18 PSI, which is recommended PSI. So we actually did the deflection test twice on this board. The first time we tested it, we got 13 millimeters drop, which is exactly the same as what we got last year. So it's the same as 2018 board. But then we took it back, deflated it, played around with the tension cable. It's a bit of a faff if you're trying to tune it up for the first time, but it's well worth doing. A point to note about that, the high tension cable is quite a soft, malleable material. It's, it's pretty stretched, obviously, so it has no give, but it's very easy to undo the knock. So I was a bit worried that when you've pumped this board up and you've already pre-stretched or stretched that cable and stretched the knot to full tightness, you wouldn't be able to get it undone. But with a figure of eight knot, you can still get that undone. So it's just a little point to note. So we tightened up the cable a bit. We changed the nose, brought the nose in a clipper further in, tightened up and we got it down to 12 millimeters straight away on the next drop. So there's no doubt with some tuning of this board, the tuning of the high tension cable, you can get the board stiffer. But remember when you're paddling this board, because it's got the stiffness right throughout from nose to tail, it does have a different paddling feel to some other stiffer boards in the market. So this is not the stiffest board on the market in the deflection test terms, but also when you're paddling it, it has a different feel because the stiffness is throughout the whole length of the board. So just bear that in mind. Outline shape is pretty much the same as last year's board. And bear in mind, again, this is the downwind board that we tested. So it has got a little bit more rocker, which you can see on the video. And because of that, it's not gonna be the fastest of boards. If you wanna go super fast on flat water, you're gonna be looking towards the flat water, flatter rocker line boards. But because it's got that more nose rocker, it makes it way easier to use downwind, to paddle into chop, and just for general paddling in moving water. So if you're gonna be doing more open water paddling, and not really focusing on flat water speed out and out, then this board, the downwind board, is probably gonna be the board you're gonna look at. Still got the rail edge at the back of the board, which helps to release the water. Definitely a good move, Starboard have got that on there. And in all the speed tests we've done on GSUP with the airline in previous years, it's still a very fast board that can easily compete with the other top end race boards in the market. So, new stuff to talk about. Well, the first thing you're gonna notice is the deck pad. There's the diamond grip deck pad, the, the sort of crocodile style skin grip deck pad back here, and then you've got the stomp pad with kicker in a diamond grip deck pad. They still had this sort of deck pad um, set up last year, but it does feel a little bit more pronounced, a little bit more grippy, and it just looks a little bit more top end finished off. The, the big thing on the side of the board here is you've got the EVA rails this is the first time we've seen this on an inflatable board. Now this does a number of things. Now probably the most obvious one is it gives you a better position to put your foot in. You can wedge your feet against the sides here, gives you a bit more stability as it does when you're paddling a more hollowed out sort of composite board. When you're sort of in a board a bit more, you have a bit more of a planted feeling. So it gives you that same sort of comfortable paddling position. You haven't got to have your feet right against here to get to feel the comfort and get grip out of that. You can even have your feet just very much just on the side 
of where the, the EVA starts to raise up. Way more comfortable, way more security. And again, when you're moving around the board, it's funny how that's that little section there just gives you a little bit more comfort when you're doing that. The second thing that does though, is it really makes the rail a lot boxier. Now with composite race boards, they're really square rails. Now that, what that does is that when you're rocking the board from left to right, from side to side, it means it gives it a much more stability because you've got a bigger rail you're trying to force through the water. Um, having that on the side really makes a difference to the stability. It's a shame it's not further up because it would make obviously more difference, but it's nice to see and it's well finished off and it does make a difference. So it's a good feature. Maybe you're gonna have to look out for a bit if you're putting it down on the rocks because you might end up scuffing this a little bit more because it's not as hard wearing as obviously the PV material on the rail. Moving on to the carry handles, all big, chunky, easy neoprene tubed carry handles, really easy to hold onto, but you've got three this year, opposed to one last year. Last year you just had the center one, and now you've got the front ones up here for great for race entries, box style racing. You're not really gonna use it in a day-to-day -day touring, cruising, fast racing sense. It's more of the running up and down the beach, but they are great to have them on there, and there's not many ice ups the performance race ice ups that have got them so that's a good point they've got them up there you've got an fcs mount up here now being located you can put your gopro you can even get drinks mounts you can get loads of stuff that you can screw into here and you can even adapt stuff to screw into there so that's nice and it's nicely situated close to you so you can access it you've got your bungee straps up at the front there definitely this one being 28 wide you could use it as a bit more of a touring baseboard but you can put your drinks flip-flops stuff under that this board still comes with the FCS Connect system, very easy to use, it's a nine inch fin, it's really nice and big and broad and wide, gets you paddling in a straight line, and actually it's a relatively quick fin as well because it's not too thick either. Who should this board best suit and what sort of weight and ability wise? Well, rider weights, you're probably gonna be able to get up to about 115, 112 kilos on this board because there is a bit of width. You could be looking at it definitely for racing, Definitely for downwinding, getting into that side of the sport, and also flat water, fast, cruising, touring, it can do a bit of that as well. It's gonna sue a lot of people. It's a very well-made board. It's, as you'd expect, moving on from the 2018 year board. It's just got way more refinements from last year. Starboard have obviously put a lot of research and development to seeing what could improve this board and it retails at around the same price of £1,299 or $1,649. The rest of the package that you get with the airline and it's very similar that you get with a lot of the deluxe boards. You get the nice recycled bag, which is made out of recycled bottles. As I said in the first look video, this bag has approximately 30 plastic bottles put into it to make this bag. It's a really soft material. It's very tough. Will took one of these away with a touring board last year when he went on his SUP trip and he said it was really easy to carry, didn't rip, didn't pull, and it's exactly the same style and the way it's finished this year's 2019 bag. This bit, the edge bag though, is definitely a very different shape to last year's. It's way easier to get the board in. You can just roll the board up. The board fits in so easily. Offset zip, so it's nice and easy to get the board in. Various straps, and then you've got your pouches inside to put stuff in. And then obviously this bag comes with the wheels, so on an airport, you can roll it round. And nicely padded back back straps. And then when you're not using them, you can just slip them down the back of the board and tuck them away so they don't get caught on things, especially if you're flying with your board. With all the starboard ice ups, you basically get the same pump, but they're finished off in very different ways. Like with the airline, you get the removable foot pegs at a slightly bigger that you just clip onto the bottom there. Then obviously when you're packing the board up, it's a lot easier. And if you're traveling with your ice up, having this pump is a lot more handy. With the more basic ice ups and definitely like the Zen Light boards that we have behind me, they come with the standard V8 starboard pump with the foot pegs obviously all put on. They are exactly the same pump, both double axis pumps pump on the upstroke and on the downstroke and then when the pumping gets hard you can just flip the nozzle over and pump on the downstroke so now let's talk about a totally new construction for starboard for 2019 this is the zen light construction now just like when we spoke about the light tech construction which is where we did the whopper review which is a composite board this is their equivalent to getting you on the water with a lighter weight board for less money but still giving you the key sizes of boards to get you on the water so they do their touring shape, which we're gonna talk about more in a minute, but that's the 12 six by 30 version. Then they do an IGO 11 two by 31, and they also do an IGO 10 eight by 33, which we've got right here as well. 
Now, all these packages are very competitively priced. Depending on where you are in the world, some come as standard with paddles and they start as little as £650 up to about $850. So they really are a cheaper price point sup, but obviously from a main brand. You still get a lot of starboards R&D, you still get the recycled EVA deck pad, you still get the bungee straps, you still get the decent pump, a nice lightweight bag, and they also supply all their boards with a toolless fin system as well. This fin system is a little bit more refined than the sort of traditional slide and clip fin system that you'll find on most ice ups. What I mean by that is basically the fin is a better shape. It's a, it's a proper fin, it's a much more profiled fin. It's gonna be way better if you wanna paddle further, less drag, and also if you wanted to get into a little bit of surfing, catch a few waves, this fin will be better for doing that as well. All of the Zen Light boards have got a recommended PSI range of 15 to 18 PSI, which shows that they can still take a lot of pressure in these boards. And when we pump them up to 17 PSI in the middle of the range and we put them on at our flexion test, the boards only dropped 18 millimeters. So they're still fairly stiff. There's a lot more bendy boards on the market that we've tested at the same pressure and in the similar light construction. So for the weight of the construction, for the weight of the board, it's still a stiff board as well. We'll talk about the 10A Igo in a minute, but let's talk about the Touring 12 6 by 30 in this Zen Light construction. So this Touring board is available in the UK with a paddle package at £699, which is a really cheap price point board to get you on the water. And it's not just a straight run of the mill board, it's obviously a starboard Touring board. It's exactly the same shape as the Double Chamber Deluxe board and the Zen board and the Paddle for Hope board. The changes for this year, for 2019, they've made the board a little bit wider up at the nose and a little bit wider back at the tail. What that does, it gives you a bit more stability as your board rocks from left to right. You've got a bit more board that wants to keep you stable. Then you could obviously put more weight on it as a paddler and you could obviously put more kit on it to take places as well. If you really are getting into paddleboarding and you want to paddle further with a bit more equipment, then maybe look towards more like the Zen or the Deluxe Double Chamber construction to a bit more stiffness, can carry a little bit more weight and the board will feel a little bit better overall. But if you still want to paddle the odd occasion with equipment and you do want to paddle a little bit further, but budget and cost is more of an issue, then the Zen Lite is still going to get you on the water and it's still going to paddle very much the same as the more expensive boards. Paddler weight wise, the touring board is going to happy to take up to 100 kilos really comfortably, maybe even to 110 kilos if you're a little bit more nimble with your footwork. If you're putting loads of weight on the board as well, you're sitting around the 95 kilos, you're gonna be able to put 20 kilos of weight on the front of the board quite happily. Now let's move on to the IGO, the 108 by 33 Now without a doubt, this is the board that's gonna get 90% of people into the sport. The size is absolutely perfect. It's not 34 wide, which would be a little bit too wide, a little bit too slow to paddle, a little bit hard for those shorter people to paddle because they're gonna have to reach over further to get their paddle in the water. So it's got a good amount of width, it's nice and stable, but it being 10.8 opposed to 10.5, it's a little bit longer, so it gives you a bit more glide. So it's easier to paddle in a straight line and keep the board moving. They do a large range of boards from a 12 foot right down to a 9.5, so they have got the complete range covered to get you on the water, which is why it's called the Igo. Just gets you paddling and there will be a board for everybody in that range. And the price point for these Igos in this Zen Light retails at £650 or $799. And in the UK at £650, you do get a tough skin paddler as well. It does vary on where you, what country you're buying these boards. Some importers will supply them with paddles. And in the UK, that is a standout package because that's a really well-made, tough paddle as well that's going to get you in the water for that £650. With all the starboard inflatables, you get their super lightweight leash. It's a great leash for the environment. It's great to get on the water, great for that light paddling, and definitely something you can't be going without. Always use your leash. The 10A Igo is going to be great for getting people into the sport for the first time, as I said earlier, and weights about up to 120 kilos because of that 33 wide. You've got enough width there to get on the water and give you some stability. So for people around the 100 kilos, 110, it's going to be a really good all round board for you. So last but not least, let's look at the new Lima for 2019, the Lima Limited. The shaft and construction is exactly the same as last year. The one we've been using is the carbon balsa, but you can also get the Tiki Light and the Tiki Tech. So you can have the same top end blade shape, 
but keep the price down. Obviously the full carbon, the carbon bolster is lighter, stiffer, it's gonna give you a bit more response, it's gonna make you paddle faster. The reason for that basically is if you have a lighter paddle in your hands, the quicker you can bring the paddle back around to plant it in the water and the stiffer the paddle is as well in the paddle shaft without it flexing, so then it can put more power into the water and help push you along quicker. But the big changes this year is all to do around the blade shape. Very simple changes, but they really have made a difference to how the paddle feels on the water. They put a lot more scoop up the sides of the paddle. Last year, this side profile was flat from the V to the outside of the paddle, and it made the paddle very quick in and out of the water, and it felt a little bit lighter to paddle in and out of the water. This year's paddle holds more water in this side profile of the paddle. And then what that does is actually makes the paddle almost feel a little bit heavier in the water. And the reason for that is, is because actually you're getting more power out of the paddle. The water is sitting into these grooves more. And the other thing that does, it keeps the paddle a little bit more planted in the water. The 2018 paddle was an easy paddle to use and great for the intermediate advanced paddlers. But now the 2019 paddle is easier again and it's way more stable and it's but you've still got that lovely slender profile quick entry to the paddle stroke and quick exit very light paddle to use and it's a beautiful paddle to paddle with and it really is our default paddle when we do any speed tests on any boards we always use the starboard lima when we're paddling it because it's just such a nice paddle to use so there we go, hope you found that video interesting. Starboard have obviously put a lot of work into their boards in 2019. The Zenlite boards are a standout range of boards, definitely my highlight of the review. The iGo is a fantastic board to get pretty much everybody on the water, but if you're looking to paddle a little bit further and do a bit of light touring, then you've still got that cheap price point touring Zenlite construction board too. The Starboard Airline for 2019 is pushing even more towards looking and feeling like a composite board with the handles and EVA rails. It really makes a difference to paddle on the water and it's a much more comfortable paddling experience. And moving on to the new Lima Limited, they've made a very standout award-winning paddle for us, even easier to use for a wider range of paddlers. As always, check out Sup Border Mag, Sup Border Pro if you're really getting into Sup. Give this video a like if it's helped you, and please let us know any comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.